All right, so just got done drawing this part. Now we are going to cam it. So we're going to jump right over here to manufacture. And our setup is going to be with this facing us like that. With the notch out to the right, this little shelf is going to be shooting off to the left. All right, so we need to go up here, new setup. All right, now um, I talked to a couple of people that watched the last video and, um, and they, they were having some trouble with the setup. And um, I think what the problem is, is they were clicking stock box point. Um, so I, I tell you, I, I'll, I'll circle back to that here in a second, but let's, um, let's get our orientation correct. So click on orientation, select Z and X. So when you're on the Z, pick anything in the Z. Right? See that? Just I, I just clicked that edge. And then it shoots me down here to X. Click anything in the X axis. Okay? And then you click your box point. Wherever you want your box point. Okay, you know, don't don't get wrapped up about how it's oriented right now because we can change that. I mean, I, I, I say which direction the arrows are pointing. You see the Z is in the wrong way? Click it. X is now the wrong way? Click it. That's all you got to do is you just, you just click that and it reverses it. Okay? That's all you got to do. Now, um, for our box point on this one, then we want it to be that back right corner. Now, we could set it middle. We could set it front left, what, you know, wherever. And we could also draw a sketch in here and put it wherever we want it to. I know it doesn't really make sense on this one, but we could, you know, put our offset right here or wherever. All right, but you want to be able to pick up your offset, obviously. Now, where I've got stock box point, I want you to look at where that offset's coming from. It's coming off of my stock. All right, let me jump ahead a little bit and show you right here. It, it's, it's trying to add 40 thousandths to my top and sides. So it thinks that my block is this big right here, which we know that's not true. All right. So you can do one of two things. You can either set all this to zero, right? That's not preferred, but that's kind of a, kind of a hack way to do it. All right. Or you can just change this to model box point. So now, no matter how much extra material you have, it's going to stay on your model, not your stock. Okay? Very important. Okay? So I feel like that was probably where the problem was coming from with the, the, the folks that I talked to. Um, all right. So got that right. Uh, stock, we don't have any extra stock. I mean, our block is one by one by one. I'm sorry, four by four by one. And our post process, you can just change that to whatever. All right, you know, four, three, 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 whatever. Don't care what you name it. And for your comment, um, you know, just, just put your name, um, you know, John Doe uh, in shop part three. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I've got setup three is showing right now um, because off screen I did I you know ran through it to make sure I didn't run into any hiccups or anything like that. So mine's showing setup three. So I'm just going to slow double click that and I'm going to say in shop part three. Okay. 
So you can also give yourself some notes here. You can say um, notch off to right, whatever to where you remember which way to put it in there. Okay. Tell you what we would need. And hold to operator. Okay, to where now when we post this code, it's going to tell us which way to orient this part. Okay. So we would need that hole facing the operator and the notch off to the right. Okay. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the bulk of this material off. All right. So our part looks like this right now. So we've got all this extra material that we need to get off. So I'm going to new operation uh, and all I'm doing right clicking new operation and we're going to go 3D milling. We're going to be doing some three axis movements. All right. And we're going to go adaptive clear, adaptive clearing. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my tools. So I'm, I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to select and I'm going to edit this tool. And all I did was right click. And for this, for, for all these aluminum parts that we're doing, we're using three fluid end mills. All right. And I, I went down to the crib and I grabbed a couple of end mills and I have them right here. And I'm looking at a three eighths end mill, three flute, and it's square, all right? And I'm going to give you the part number, it's 34710. So whenever you go to run this, that's going to pop up, and you can just run to the crib and grab part number 34710, okay? All right, I'm going to copy and paste that. Well, all right, so copy and paste it or copy that. I'm going to go to cutter. My flute length on this one is one, so we're good there. Three flute. Okay. Now, all this right here, we're going to leave this the same. All right, now, yeah, we, we can definitely go more aggressive with this, but I say we just leave it, uh, just leave it the same. Pretty conservative and post processor. And I'm going to paste that information there. All right, so that's tool one. All right, and I tell you what, let's go ahead and edit this one too, which you don't have it, but I did this one off screen. I guess I could have deleted it, but here's all that information. So, and that this is you're just going to create a ball mill. Tell you what, let me delete that one. So let's go new tool, ball end mill. My description is going to be a three flute 0.375 ball. And that is part number 34920. All right. So 0.375, my cutter. My flute length is one inch. Shaft is good, holder, cutting data. So we're gonna go 10,000 RPM. And we'll probably go 60 inches a minute here. Probably go 50 here, 30 there, okay. Post processor, just going to paste that there and accept. So we've got our two tools that we're going to use here. Obviously, first we're going to use this flat end mill. Okay. Now we're in an adaptive tool path. So pretty much all you have to give it is I'll tell you what, let me let me bump some of this stuff up a little bit. 
that, that, that's fine. All right, so in an adaptive tool path, all you need to do is give it a silhouette of what you want to cut. Um, you know, think of it as like a, an X and Y boundary, okay? And what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at the model and it's going to hit everything that it can in that X and Y boundary and it's gonna go as deep as you tell it to go, okay? And I'll, I'll give you a good example of that. So machining boundary, I'm going to say selection. Well, I tell you what, I'm gonna go none on this. I'm just gonna say everything you can cut on this model, cut it, all right? I'm gonna turn off rest machining. Uh, rest machining, if you hover over that, um, it, it, you see rest stands for remaining stop, you know, so if you got in there like trying to cut a pocket with a big giant cutter, um, and you needed to go in and fine tune some corners and stuff, then, uh, you would use rest machining, all right? Um, so we, um, so I'm doing no machining boundary, but I'm going to give it a bottom to go to. So I'm going to click here and say selection and click right there. So I'm telling it to machine everything that it can looking straight down on the part, but stop at this depth. All right, my passes. So for my optimal load, I'm going to set that to about a hundred thousandths. So that's just saying, you know, under ideal conditions, how much do you want this cutter engaged radially, not axially, radially. Okay, now my maximum roughing step down, I'm gonna set that to 0.25, and my fine step down is 0.025, it's 10% of my maximum rough. Okay, I'm gonna leave 20 thousandths radially and 20 thousandths axially, and then my next screen, all that stuff is good. I'm gonna leave that alone, and I'm gonna click OK, Let's take a look at that tool path. So what you're seeing here is the cutter is coming in and it's taking a big bite at this depth. That's my major step down. So from my disc, so if I was to measure from here, from the top of my stock and part to here, that's going to be 250 thousandths. And then it goes up by 25, which was my minor step down, or my, I think they call it fine step down. And then it's going to cut again. Up another 25, cut again. Up another 25, cut again. So it gives you, it's removing more material. All right. So let's look at that on graphics real quick. So there's that hundred thousandths cutter engagement. And there's the 25 thousandths fine step downs. So now it's going to go down another 250 thousandths. All right, so now we've got this little stair step type deal. You know, so that, that's as close of a 3D surface as we care to get to right now. All right, that's all we're doing is roughing. All right, so we talked about optimal load and then we talked about um, major and fine step downs. All right, so. Let's go back in here and change a few things just so you can see what they do. So I'm going to change my fine, my max rough step down to one inch. And I'm going to do my fine step down to a half inch. Just want you to see what it looks like. Okay. So that's, that's all it did was that because there was nothing that fit within those parameters. So, go right over here, and let's set our fine step down to 0.125. And 
and let's run that. So it doesn't care about getting close to the net shape because it's working within the parameters that you gave it. So you see the shape of the part. Okay. So let's go right back over here and let's change that back to 0.25 and then 0.25. That's about what we're looking for. I mean, it's fairly conservative, but it, uh, it does well. All right, so now let's talk about optimal load. So if you see the step over that this tool was using, that's going to be somewhere around a hundred thousandths. All right, under ideal conditions, it is a hundred thousandths, but situ situations when, when machining like this are very rarely ideal, all right, because it's moving and jiving so much. So let's go in here and let's change that optimal load to 0.25. So now it's taking a lot bigger bites. Okay. Still, you know, we, we didn't change our step downs or any of that. All we did was changed how much our tool was going to be engaged radially. All right, so for me, you know, Aaron, on the side of conservity, I, I normally stick this number somewhere around 100 thousandths for a 3 eighths cutter, about 25% of the cutter, okay? All right, so we've got that roughed. Now, you, you don't want to get crazy with this. I mean, you could set your fine step down to... You know, hold on, I'll look, I'll show you. You see how our runtime's three minutes and five seconds? And yours may not show that. And if you if you want to change that, I'll show you where. I believe it's under preferences. And so under preferences, go to manufacture and then show operation machining time. Check that and then apply and OK. And the next time you run a program, that'll be there. Or, you know, next time you run a simulation, it'll be there. But, you know, we're not super concerned about getting this real close yet. But I want to show you we can get closer if we wanted to, but there's no need in it. I'm going to go right here, and instead of a 25 thousandths fine step down, I'm going to do a tenth, just to show you. Probably explode my computer. Yeah, I'm not waiting on that. So let's go a thousandths. All right, so it finally got done, got, got some warnings and stuff, but you can uh, see for the most part. Okay. You see, there, there's, there's no need in us doing all that because we're going to come through with a ball nose. There's no need in us getting that, that fine with it. Okay. So obviously going to change this back. And I just want y'all to see what, what, uh, what all these settings and all that stuff do, you know, experimenting with different stuff. That's really how you learn this CAD cam. All right. So next thing we're going to do is cut this shelf. All right. We've already got the three eighths cutter in there. Um, so there's no need in us switching to the ball nose and then switching back. Let's get it all done with that one tool when we can, when we've already got it in the spindle. So I'm going to create a new operation. 
it's going to be a 2D contour. Uh, you've done a 2D contour before. You did it on this. All right, pretty pretty straightforward process. And contour is kind of the jack of all trades sort of tool path. Um, all right, all of our spindle speeds and feed rates and all that stuff are still good. And I'm going to select that surface. Now, some of you guys out there, when you clicked on that, the arrow popped up on the other side. What that arrow is doing is telling it what side you want the cutter on. We don't want to cut this line on the other side. Keep in mind, the contour only sees the line that you selected. It doesn't see the model, okay? So it'll, it'll happily cut right through your model, okay? So you, you have to be smart about this. The machine is not going to do it for you. You have to make sure that you've got it on the right side. All right, so you set that on the right side. I'm going to come right here, our bottom height. I'm going to go selection, click right there so it knows where the bottom is. Okay, our compensation type, we're just going to go in computer for this one uh, because you're using own size cutters. You don't have regrinds or anything like that. Okay. Now, tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and roll with something I, I want to kind of show an error. Right, so I'm just going to leave all this stuff just like it is and click OK. All right, so we'll, we'll run that on the graphics. Okay, so that, that was our contour. So let me slow that down. So a couple of things happen here. For one, the cutter, watch this. It's zing, like, I mean, it is moving in the Z directly down into our part. See that? So that's not good. And then it is not getting completely off the part before it comes up. All right, and a lot of times that, that's okay, all right? But let me show you how to get around that. And another thing, we didn't clean that shelf all the way up, all right? If we had a bigger cutter, it would have cleaned all that up, but we don't have a bigger cutter right now, so let me show you how to clean it. Okay, go right here to contour. Again, we're just gonna edit this. Now, go right here and let's address the issue where it was cutting down in the Z and it was gonna hit our part first. Let's address that issue. All right, so tangential fragment distance. So if I set that to 0.375, whatever, okay? You don't have to set it that high, but I'm setting it that high just to show you. Well, I tell you what, set it to point two, a little bit bigger than the cutter radius. Okay, so okay. So now, now it's coming off the part completely. So that's, that's what we want. So that problem was solved. So now we need to solve the issue where it's not cleaning the entire shelf. So edit. I'm going to go right over here, and I'm going to do multiple finish passes. There's a couple of different ways you can do this, but from what I've seen, this is you know the easiest. So we're going to go a 250,000 step over and two passes. Now I'm also going to go repeat finish pass. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna actually take three passes. It's gonna take one pass out here, one pass right up on the shoulder, and then another pass right up on the shoulder. It's just a flex cut. 
hit OK. So, so there's one, two, and our flex cut. So now, if we were to do a comparison, that shoulder's good. Okay, and here, here's another little thing worth mentioning. Uh, even when I carry that tolerance way down, like to five tenths or to a tenth, then notice how all the straight stuff looks decent. But when you get into the rounded stuff, you see how it starts getting hairy looking? That's just the graphics card. All right? It can handle straight stuff with relative ease. But when you get into round stuff, it starts struggling a little bit. All right. But I normally like leaving that set on about 5,000. Okay. So got that done. Now we just need to come in here and ball mill that. So I'm going to right click, new operation, 3D milling. And we're going to go with a parallel. So there's a bunch of different types of strategies that you can use. Uh, these are mainly um, just for metal removal, right? just roughing, whatever. They're, they're not really used to finish much, but all these are for finishing. Um, and the further you go down, the, the, the crazier they get. All right. Um, so, you know, I, I encourage you to kind of experiment with them, draw some parts and experiment with them. Um, <coughs> but we're, uh, I tell you what, we'll do parallel and I'll, I'll show you a parallel and then a contour. All right. So we're going to select our three eighths ball mill as our tool and our geometry. We're going to click selection and we're going to tell it that we want it to stay within that boundary. Okay, now we can give it an additional offset and I don't know why it's not showing me. Normally it updates, but you can give it an additional offset if you wanted to, but, um, but for this case, we don't need to. All right, so we've got our boundary set. Okay, so you got Bounding box, silhouette, and selection. Selection is the one that you can just click it. Okay. Um, silhouette is the one that's just going to stay within the constraints of the part. And bounding box is one where you can draw something. So, like, you, you can draw where you want it to stay in. Okay. Actually, note this is different on here. It's how it was on another cam package, but... Uh, so a bounding box is just going to stay within the stock confines. Uh, silhouette's going to stay within the uh, feature confines. And then the selection is going to stay within a sketch. Okay. So selection, we've already selected that. All right, we're going to go tool center on boundary. And you need to, <coughs> excuse me, you need to turn on contact point boundary and you need to turn on well contact uh, only doesn't really matter for this part it would if we had a hole in the part or something we didn't want to cut but if you hover over that contact boundary selection it gives you a really really good explanation of it um, so I would encourage you to uh, to look at that all right I'm not going to read it to you. You can read. All right. Um, so I'm going to jump over heights because there's nothing that we're going to change on heights and uh, passes. So I'm going to set this. So all, all this stuff is pretty good up here. All right. But my pass direction, I'm going to leave that on zero degrees because I'm telling it I want it to go this way. 
All right, and I want it to run parallel with the x-axis. All right, if I, turn, if I turn that to 90, it's going to cut this way. All right, so I'm going to cut on my step over, and I'm going to set that to about 50 thousandths, all right, just, just to show you something. All right, I'm going to tell it I want to go both ways. So I want to climb mill and conventional mill. All right, and with ball milling, that's kind of the standard that, that we always do. And uh, up down milling, that that's yeah. So if you hover over that, all right. So again, this is you. Well, if you read that, it's it's used if you're using insert cutters that are restricted to only specific cutting directions. To where basically, if you don't have a center cutting end mill, all right. And all that should be good. So let's take a look at that. And you can see that 50,000 step over. So each one of those lines is 50,000 apart from one another. So let's run this on graphics. All right. Now, you got to be careful with a ball mill because. You can leave yourself, try to get it to where you can see it, you can leave yourself scallops, okay? Little, little kind of waves, all right? But you also don't want to get too crazy with this because there is kind of, you get to a point of kind of diminishing returns and, um, Tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw something real quick to uh, to to show you that. Okay, so just uh, just kind of throw this together, and I want you to imagine that uh, that each of these is a ball mill. Okay. Um, you know, I don't I don't think that we. Uh, I'm hoping you guys can just kind of use your imagination that uh, that this is a this is a ball mill that would be running to me and away from me. I tell you, let's clean that up. Okay, so hopefully this uh, this makes a little more sense now where I've got uh, two cutters drawn here, sitting side by side. Um, I've got this one drawn as like a 375 cutter. They could be a, a half inch cutter or a one inch cutter, whatever. All right, so my point is um, they're, they're in mills, all right? They're supposed to represent in mills, all right? Now, this line right here would represent our step over. So if I did a step over of, let's say, 50 thousandths like we just did, okay, this little area right here is referred to as a scallop. So if this would be my first pass, then it would step over 50 thousandths, and then it would cut again. So this little area right here is referred to as a scallop. Just gonna draw a line here. And even with a 50,000 step over, it's still only giving us a scallop of 1,007 tenths. Okay? So, a, a good rule of thumb um, for this, at least in my experience, is I normally set this at about 10 thousandths. When, when ball milling. All right, so if we zoom on in here, I right, kind of lose track of where you are, but that right there would be our scallop, okay? So if I jump back over here to this part, and I look at that, and if I run this on graphics, okay? Guess it would be better to look at it this way. That's our step over. All right, you know, going back to this image right here. We had our set to 50 thousandths. Okay, so step over. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple, 
simple concept once you once you understand what's uh what's happening once you get a grasp on what's happening rather all right so let's go in here and change that to um to about ten thousandths okay so now our lines are significantly closer together um, and theoretically this should give us a better finish right should be giving us a finish uh, that's closer to our net shape all right uh, now like I said you got to be careful because there is a point of diminishing return where you're just wasting machine time all right no it's going to be up to you to determine what that point is um, but just understand you know, a 10, 15, 20,000 step over may seem like a lot, but it's really not, okay? So we've, um, we've got our tool constrained within that area to where it's gonna stay within that area, okay? But I wanna show you something right here. If we decided to go outside the boundary, by let's just say 25,000 something little okay now it's going to waterfall okay uh, I'm sure there's a more technical term for that but that's what I've always called it was waterfalling so it the it's just going to pour over that edge now you can limit this a little bit if you need it to waterfall um, you can limit this by telling it that it can only go like to here. So it's still waterfalling, but it's just not going all the way down to the bottom of the part. Okay. Um, now let's go to center on boundary. Let's go zero additional offset. Let's get it back to where it was. Okay. And then Let's turn off contact point boundary. So it's basically stopping right there on that edge. So let's uh, let's run that on simulation and see what that looks like. Hopefully it's going to do what I want it to do. All right. Off to, well, yeah, it did. All right, so it left a little bit of a lip. So let me show you on comparison. Set that to. Okay, see where it left that extra material? Looks like it left a little bit on the uh, top. Well, there's a good shot right there. So it's going to leave it there. And it should leave it up here on this side too. Doesn't look like it did, but I'm sure it's something. Okay. No, that's what happens when you turn off contact point boundary because the cutter is not allowed to come all the way. All right. And, you know, yet again, if you just hover over contact point boundary, it gives you an awesome explanation of it. We'll turn that back on. And that's what we want. So if we run this on graphics. Looks like we've got about a 10 minute runtime, two tools, simple offset. All right, pretty, pretty simple little job here. All right, so that is your assignment for, for this week. All right, you are going to Modify this part. Well, you're going to save a new copy of the part, modify it, save that in the folder with your instructor. Then you're going to post this code. You're going to save that code on Canvas. And then in the shop during your designated Mac 150 time, you are going to machine this part. Okay. Uh, so get with your instructor on, on uh, when you'll actually machine this part. Um, so I don't, I don't want to give any dates or anything there because, you know, every, every, everybody's different. So um, let, you, uh, let you talk to your instructor about that, uh, about when the actual physical part will be due. Um, but there it is. Um, 
Oh, I do remember. I was supposed to go over contour. Uh, I tell you, for sake of time, um, if, if you want to kind of piddle around in contour, just do a uh, derived operation 3D contour and just kind of just kind of mess around with some of those settings in there. And if you screw it up too bad, just delete it. No big deal. All right. Um, so that should be it. Uh, and uh, hope this was helpful. Good luck.